Greetings, greetings, greetings and salutations on and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the night shift. Right and now here with the star I say, in no matter where your day say tribulation day everywhere. Stop. It's community and finance night. System one wall with the house, so we may and touch the microphone. We slew them just like David with one tone. I say the track. I want to say greetings and salutations to each and everyone locked in right now. Those tuning on tuning radio. The night shift to DJ Kevin Stew. Big up to those across the pond. One harmony radio. Top of the morning to you guys over there in the UK. Much love and much respect. Big up to those who are locked in in New York. Island worldwide. Showing off the power of music. Big ups to those in New Jersey, NIE Radio. Much love to those hailing out of Texas. WGLRO, home of the Donnie Walker Morning Show, the People Station. Big ups to Aliwap Music, Aliwap Radio, and Dusik Media Group. Thank you for the support. Big ups to those who are locked in on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. Inviting you all to call a friend, tell a friend. Call your enemies, the friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends. Friends of your friends, call everybody. Tell them the night shift to DJ Kevin Stew is on. Community and Finance Night. Kicking top for the sound of the real storm. A track called Foreign Life. Them system, one, one Bless up China Nicole. We just like David. Big up Derek. How things going with you guys over there, Derek? Abroad, I know the work is never done. Big up DJ Smooth. It's not pretty here, Mr. Lindsay. Lord. Smooth sends his regards.
kind of had to play out this one for you. The black, the poor. That way you can listen to the lyrics the in its entirety. I want to say thank you to my segment sponsor, Paul C Media Group. Really and being in the moment is priceless. They provide innovative streaming and recording solutions. Yeah. Give them a call, 754-999-6020. Tell them DJ Kevin Stew sent you. Look how them undermine the need, yeah. The black, the poor get no regard. Lord. So hear the talk, you watch the walk, you read the psalms, you learn the part, you eat who dwells in. Hey, hello. For the most I got it by the father. When you step, don't forget to say you're familiarly older. I, don't only I haven't spoken to you in a while. I feel like I'm going through withdrawals. Yeah, hold them, I try control, we will not belong to them. Then why we go back to the days of picking cotton tree again? So rise my people out of your slumber Don't be a prey in the cause of the vulture Remember your roots and remember your culture While them a pillage and while them a blunder The trad, lad Is really hard, lad It's not pretty here abroad, lad So if there's one thing that is for sure Look The real storm got it right yeah. It's not pretty here abroad at all all. And uh, we, we, we see it, those of us that are locked in to the news, I shouldn't say those of us because to be honest with you, I, I don't watch the news like that. I really don't. I, I get a lot of my news from social media to be honest and um, from colleagues in the industry and then when I see some of that information being put out there, then I'll go and I'll look and see what else is out there. And this weekend was, was particularly troubling for me. Not unusual, but troubling nonetheless. When you take into consideration what has been happening um, as it relates to the police and the black community specifically, you really have to wonder when things happen, like what happened this past weekend, why they're still happening. When, when, when you hear of stories like that of Dante Wright in Minneapolis, um, in Minnesota, near Minneapolis, you, you wonder, you know, this really still going on? Really? And then you hear a story like, oh, it was a mistake. What? A mistake? Well, there are a few questions that you have to ask before you even get to the point of the mistake. Why did it have to get to the point where a mistake like that could happen? That's, that's one of the first questions that, that, that have to be, you, you just have to ask it. You, you can't just take it for granted that, oh, you know, it was just a mistake. Sorry. Sorry. You know, there are some things that apologies don't fix. And when a life is taken the way this life was taken, Apologies don't quite work the same. Numbers to call, numbers to text to get you in touch. 773-789-STEW. 773-789-7839. Call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram. Those all work. And if none of those work for you, you can Skype me. Kevin.Stew is the Skype handle. Don't be afraid to use it. Um, those of you on Facebook Live, I didn't even say hello to you guys on, 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 in Facebook land. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Um, yeah, KevinStew.com is, is being remade. I'm going to have to do it from scratch because something happened and we can't figure out what exactly it was that happened. So we're working to, to rebuild KevinStew.com from scratch. So we'll be back on that platform ASAP. The P is important there. <laughs> and um, it is possible. How soon? Well, that is, that is the question. So we, we're working on it. 
those of you that are concerned, thank you for the concern. And uh, thank you for the well wishes that have been sent thus far. Um, so 773-789, Stu gets you in touch. 773-789-7839. I'll say it one more time. 773-789-7839. All right, so here's what happened to Dante Wright. Um, there, there, and this, this actually started some, some protesting in Minneapolis. Now, here's how the, some of the news, um, sites, some of the news sites, this is how they, it, 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 it was put out, uh, starting with sahanjournal.com. Let me give you this bit of information through from them. And this was on this was yesterday, April eleven. This was on April eleven. Um so I'm gonna skip out that first paragraph and go straight to Wright, who was identified by family members, was stopped by police at around two PM. Alright. Identified by family members. Keep that in mind. As he was driving in a residential neighborhood, Brooklyn Center Police said in a statement that officers discovered an outstanding warrant and tried to take him into custody. When he got back into his car, an officer shot Wright, who managed to drive off but crashed into another vehicle several blocks away. He was declared dead at the scene. Brooklyn Center Police said in a news release its officers wear body cameras and that the police de- believes both body cameras and squad cameras were activated at the time of the shooting. People began streaming the, to, to the scene, joined by Wright's family, and tensions kept rising throughout the afternoon and evening. At, a, at about 11.30 p.m., Brooklyn Center Police declared the crowd an unlawful assembly and said anyone who remained at the scene, including journalists, would be arrested. <clears throat> Excuse me, would be arrested. Minnesota National Guard personnel were seen in the area of the police station on Humboldt Avenue, north of Interstate 94. At about the same time, an NPR news reporter witnessed stores being damaged and some looting on the way and Shingle Creek Crossing Shopping Center, at the Shingle Creek Crossing Shopping Center and nearby stores in Brooklyn Center. Um, There were also police scanner reports of sporadic looting and property damage in Minneapolis in the early morning hours Monday, prompting a large law enforcement response. All right, so curfew was put in place. Uh, School districts in Brooklyn Center and neighboring Brooklyn Park um, were employing distance learning for the day. And this was this was one report, uh, courtesy of SahanJournal.com. Now, speaking at a briefing early Monday in Minneapolis, Minnesota Department of Public Safety Commissioner John Harrington said more National Guard troops and state law enforcement personnel were headed into the Twin Cities and would be visible in the metro area this week, on top of personnel already in place for the ongoing Derek Chauvin trial. Now, that in and of itself is a whole nother story. The trial of Derek Chauvin. But mainly, what we're mainly looking at right now is what is as it, as information as it relates to Dante Wright. My heart goes out to Dante's family. I recognize the pain that they're going through. We are all we all here in Brooklyn Brooklyn Center recognize the pain that you're going through he said in a video message we are going to we are going to make sure that everything is done in our power to ensure that justice is done this is city mayor mike elliot and governor tim walls tweeted late sunday saying he he was closely monitoring the situation in Brooklyn Center. Gwen and I are praying for Dante Wright's family as our state mourns another life of a black man taken by law enforcement. 
Now, here's how they're laying out what happened. Um, in the early hours, no lie. Not true. That is not where it is. Um, in a video posted on Twitter by KR11, KRE11 news reporter, or KRE11 reporter Chris Hrapsky, Katie Wright described hearing her son talk with police over the phone during the stop and someone telling her son not to run. She also said after being disconnected, she managed to talk with Wright's girlfriend who was a passenger in the car. Katie Wright said the woman put the phone next to the driver's seat so she could see her son, who appeared lifeless. When an officer demanded the phone be shut off, Katie Wright said she called 911 to try f to figure out the couple's location. The girlfriend, who, had, who, was not, who has not been named, was taken to hospital with what police call non-life-threatening injuries. Speaking before the confrontation between protesters and law enforcement outside the police station, she asked for calm. All violence, if it keeps going on, is only going to be about the violence. We need to be about my son, why my son got shot for no reason, Katie Wright said to the crowd near the shooting scene. We need to, to, to make sure about it's about him and not about smashing police cars because that's not going to bring my son back. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, so that's as much as I'm giving you from, from that particular report. Now, according to the theguardian.com, the, they, they released an article. Now, I shared what Donnie Walker had put out on social media yesterday. And I shared that on my social media page this morning. Now, the article that I shared is not the article that is there now. Let me say that. And I tried to find the article that I had shared. And I don't know if it is by design or just purely accidental. But the article I read, I can't find. And in the article I read, it said that the police had not identified Dante Wright. Yeah, I'm, 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 you know, blissful. I'm not too thrilled about bringing these stories either. However, I was compelled to bring this one. Tonight would normally have been uh, Lauder Hill Police Department's night to be on, but because of some conflicting issues they had they weren't able to 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 be present tonight and we'd have been talking a little bit more about on the lighter side of of policing on the on what would be considered the better side of policing and um and so yes i am i'm 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 bothered by these stories i am i truly am but the article i shared was replaced by something else and i don't know if it is some some new algorithm why if i share an article now it ends up being updated when the news site updates their articles but that if you anyone goes to my website no i mean to my to my social media page go to my facebook page and the article i shared on dj kevin stew dj dash kevin space stew you can go and look it's it's not a private account it's very much public i shared donnie walker's post that article is not the same article completely different article it's an updated article one that speaks of it being an accident that Dante got shot. Dante. Let me, let me say his name right. Now, based on one article, 
news article from theguardian.com. Yeah, it's surprising, but not surprising. They said police in Minneapolis, in a Minneapolis suburb, said an officer accidentally shot and killed a 20-year-old black man on Sunday afternoon during a traffic stop. Releasing graphic body camera footage, they say shows the officer intended to use a taser, not a handgun, during the death of unarmed Dante Wright. The incident plunged the suburb of Brooklyn Center into a night of unrest as Minneapolis remains on edge during the murder trial of former officer Derek Chauvin over the death of George Floyd. Hundreds of protesters clashed with police in riot gear who deployed tear gas and flashbangs to disperse, disperse the police. I'm sorry, disperse the crowds. All right. Now, there are a couple of things in, in just that little paragraph there that 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 bother me the fact that the crowd was dispersed using gases and non-lethal bullets right so what caused the crowd to be this to to end up oh so, sorry what what caused the, pro, the crowd to end up in a state of unrest outside of the fact that another young black man was killed by police because my understanding in the initial report was that it was a peaceful protest so they were protesting they were not rioting and then non-lethal Web, uh, non-lethal rounds were fired into the crowd and gases were used to disperse them. Another thing that is, is troubling to me is where it is said that anyone that stuck around would be in violation of the law and be arrested. No, but somewhere I read and, and many, know, many, many know how that speech went where we have the right to protest, right? Now, if memory serves me correctly, if it wasn't in Minnesota, it was probably in Wisconsin, where a government office was actually under siege. And I'm, this, is, this is before what happened in Capitol. When... All these white protesters, armed white protesters, went into a government building and was shouting in police officers' faces and rah, rah, rah. you didn't hear of tear gas being deployed. You didn't hear of, of, of non lethal rounds being fired into the into the into the crowd. So how then does it does it work out that here it is. People are saying, you know, we want answers. We want to know why this young man life, young man's life was taken. And all of a sudden, no, it's riot gear. So, is the police acting in response to the crowd being boisterous and uh, rioting, looting, damaging property? Or did the crowd start doing this after the, cr after the police acted the way they did? So, all of the information is, is not coming out in some of these reports. Now, um, at a press conference inside Brooklyn Center Police Headquarters, surrounded by riot police and National Guard troops, the police chief, Tim Gannon, described the shooting as an accidental discharge and confirmed no weapon had been recovered from Wright's vehicle. The county medical examiner has ruled the death a homicide. The mayor of Brooklyn Center, Mike Elliott, said he had spoken to Joe Biden, who offered assistance. Not sure what assistance President Joe Biden would be assist, would be offering, um, but um, 
So Elliot says, I want to say that our hearts are aching right now. We are in pain right now. And we recognize that this couldn't have happened at a worse time. We will get to the bottom of this. We will do all that is in our power to make sure that justice is done for Dante Wright. Um, Elliot also said he supported firing the officer involved. Firing the officer involved. That's it? I don't know how many of you have, have looked it up. Dante is spelled D-A-U-N-T-E. You can look it look him up. D-A-U-N-T-E-W-R-I-G-H-T. Dante Wright. And what you'll probably find coming up as, as your first bits of information is that it was an accidental death. Where the officer... And, and there's a video too. Where the officer thought... She was using her taser. And even before firing the taser, shouts, and this is on the video. This is on, on the body cam. The officer shouts, taser, taser, taser. Before that, she's saying, I'm going to tease him. I'm going to tease him. I'm going to tease him. But she has a gun in her hand and not a taser. Now, I am looking at, when, when, when I look at a taser and I look at a gun, there are some subtle differences. One being the size of the taser and the handle of the taser versus that of the gun. So, what kind of distress was this officer in? How, 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 how much of a stressful situation was it was this routine traffic stop that this officer would mistake her gun for a taser now incidentally it was said that he was pulled over for let me see if i can find it and read it to you as as per one of these media hosts presenting the information because he was basically pulled over for air fresheners hanging from the back glass. And so then while they were they, they pulled him over, apparently there was some outstanding warrant. Now what confuses me is that he gets pulled over, told to get out of the vehicle. And this is in a new vehicle, by the way. So it's it's not like they... I, I, I can't say for sure if they would have run the plates and connected it with to, to, to him, to Dante, right? Because it was, what, two weeks? There's a report that said two weeks prior, um, his mother bought him this car. So is the car in his name or is the car in his mother's name? And he was handed the keys and he's on the insurance. Now, they wouldn't know that he's on the insurance until they see the papers, right? But anyway. Um, here it is. The video shows him out of the car. Now, his actions are also questionable. Because... They were handcuffing him, and I, I couldn't hear clearly if he was saying, "You, you don't have any reason to arrest me or, or anything like that." I don't, I'm not clear on what he was saying, but he was being handcuffed, and somehow, not handcuffed anymore, he jumped back into the car. While he get got get on getting back into the car, behind the steering wheel. They're tussling. The police officers and him, there's a tussle. And this female officer always had her gun trained in the direction of Dante Wright. And the officers clear the way when she shouts, Taser, Taser, Taser. Which I guess is standard procedure. Then she fires one shot. Now, because she fires once, I can say 
all right, yes, she, she probably did think she had her taser. Because she only fired once. Typically, you have a gun, you're going to pull the, the trigger a few times. Semi-automatic. And so she fired once. And then she goes, oh no, I shot him. Well, oh no, I shot him. It doesn't bring the bullet back. So he got shot. He drives off, crashes into another vehicle. I guess after passing out. But he's dead on the scene. Now, based on this, they're saying, you know, we support the firing of this officer. And maybe because this is still early yet, that's all they're talking about. They're not, they're not yet talking about pressing charges or whatever. However, do I believe that charges need to be pressed? Not charges need to be brought against this officer? Yes, I do. I really do. Do I believe that there are other officers involved in other incidents that... that charges need to be brought up against them yes i do mainly talking about another one that surfaced over the weekend but didn't happen over the weekend this one actually happened a few months ago this happened back in december in virginia but this one i came across it just this weekend and apparently it has also been making some rounds in the news not as bad as the case with with dante right but still pretty bad and i'll tell you why in a moment i want to say thank you to my segment sponsor althea and her healing heavenly hands thank you althea su uh, she is a licensed massage therapist operating out of broad county north miami dade and south palm beach counties she comes to you she brings her oils she brings her table and of course her healing heavenly hands and she comes to you covid free she would definitely want to leave the same way so if you have the virus, just keep it to yourself. Don't call her over for a massage. Although it would be quite relaxing, don't do it. So numbers to use, 954-655-9000, 954-655-9000. Or you can email her at theolita at att.net. Her new enterprise is also called Chioli. Change your lifestyle, change your life. And this is her personal training business. So, yeah, she gets to put your muscles in pain and she also gets to ease the pain of your muscles by giving you massages. So give her a call. It's a one-stop shop for everything. But Broad County, North Miami-Dade and South Palm Beach counties in Florida, if you're flying in and you, you're good to go, you're COVID-free and you can prove it, give her a call. All right? Cool. So thank you, Althea. Now, back in December... What, here's here's how this had happened. And he, there's an article on CBSnews.com, which reads, Police officers in Virginia held an army officer at gunpoint, handcuffed him and doused him with pepper spray, all during an illegal traffic stop. Officials said on Sunday that one of the officers has been fired. Officer Joe Gutierrez was fired following the December 5 incident. Which month are we in? April. When did this happen? December. And it was at the beginning of December. So you had all of December. You had January. You had February. You had March. And now into April. So four full months to address this. Now... It's just since what the video has been leaked out, since the video was released. You know, why is it now, four months later, that some action is being taken? But I digress. So, Officer Joe Gutierrez was fired on the uh, following the December five incident, which was captured on video. The town of in the town of Windsor, Virginia. Um, which was said in a statement on Sunday, acknowledging the unfortunate events that transpired. Karen Nazaro, a second lieutenant 
in the U.S. Army Medical Corps who is black and Latino is suing the town. Following an internal investigation, the town said that Gutierrez did not follow department policy. They did not provide any further information on the other officer involved in the incident, Daniel Crocker, but said the department is requiring additional training. What more kind of training do, does the department need at this point in time when something like racial profiling has been big in the news not just now either this is something that has been talked about i don't know i've i've i've, I've been in this country um almost two decades and the whole time i was here that was being talked about before i got here that was being talked about so what what, what more training does this officer need what more training does this, 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 this police department need what needs to be done is it only in the communities that are predominantly black with predominantly black police officers that understand how to treat people of 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 color i don't get it you know when i talk to the police officers in in lauder hill florida and i talk to the residents of lauder hill and hear how poly how they police in that community and, and and how things are done and I, I i go to a police officer's retirement and the city of lauder hill is turned out in droves for one police officer's retirement are you serious and then i i turn to the news and i get reports like this not only that i watched the video and so here it is this army second lieutenant is in his vehicle pulled over pulled up into a gas station and body cams are running um and you see him with his arms out the window he's still wearing his seat belt his dog is in the car he's wearing his seat belt and he's in uniform police officers guns drawn well trained on him and they're telling him to get out of the car and he's saying well you know i'm 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 afraid to get out of the car and one of them actually says you know you should be afraid what so i am a law abiding citizen and i should be afraid if police pulls me over and police is going to tell me that i should be afraid but let's take it a step further I signed up and is currently enlisted in the armed forces of this country, protecting this country, so protecting this individual who works in this country, who is telling me that I should be afraid of him, whom I signed up to protect. Y'all can explain this to me. Anybody can explain this to me. In... I don't know however many words you want to somebody make that make sense to me if, if if you don't want to text it if you actually want to call and and, and share your views feel free to 773-789-7738978-9-7839. so i'm i'm totally confused and I believe I have the right to be confused when it comes to something like this because here it is, an officer of the U.S. Army. So, not just an officer of a neighboring police department. An officer in the U.S. Army, in uniform, pulled over by cops and told, you should be afraid. So, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this article, courtesy of, 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 of CBS News. The town of Windsor prides itself in, in, in its small town charm and the community-wide respect of its police department. The, uh, due to this, we are saddened for events like this to cast our community in a negative light. Rather than deflect criticism, we have addressed these matters with our personnel administratively. We are reaching out to community stakeholders to engage in dialogue and commit ourselves to additional discussions in the future. 
in both body camera and cell phone video, Nazaro in his army uniform is seen with his hands out the window of the car. I have not committed any crime, Nazaro said. The two officers order him to get out of the car, drawing their guns. Guns drawn, telling the man to come out of the car. I'm honestly afraid to get out, he said. Yeah, dude, you should be, one of the officers responded. In the video, Nazaro reportedly asked why he was pulled over, so he still doesn't know why he was pulled over. And one of the officers pepper sprays and kicks him. He expresses concern for his dog, who he says is choking on pepper spray in the back seat. All right, so I have a problem with how this part was written because I watched the video. But for those who didn't watch the video, um, just just reading that or just hearing that is enough to irritate you and, and and rightly so you should be irritated so they walk up to the to, to the vehicle his hands are out the window his seat belt is on and, and they're telling him you know get out of the car get out of the car get out of the car my, my seat belt is on I, you know i'm afraid to get out of the car they tell him they're going to pepper spray him then they do it and did he, I think he reached out and opened the door from, no, one of the officers reached into the vehicle. While his hands are still out, the officer reaches into the vehicle and un opens the door. He's wearing his seatbelt. The officer that was, that, that was fired, what's his name? Um, I, I, let me go back to it. Gutierrez tells him Tells the other officer, don't reach in there. And so he pulls his, he, he pepper sprays him first. Gutierrez pepper sprays him. The dog is in the car. Well, yet again, the dog is still in the car. Officer pepper sprays him. Then he pulls his seatbelt. And as he's pulling his seatbelt, he's calmly, still calm. Throughout this whole whole thing. Telling the officers, you know, this is messed up. This is messed up that you're doing this. This is really messed up. My dog is in here choking on this pepper spray. And this is messed up that you're doing this. Shut up. Get on the ground. They're shouting at him. Put your hands behind your back. You should, all you needed to do was comply. You weren't complying. Right? What? Why are you stopping this man? Now, I'll say this again, the story that I posted, um, because I had also shared this from Donny Walker. No, I didn't share this one from Donny Walker. But watching the video, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. And he was allegedly pulled over for a traffic violation. But... All this is happening for a traffic violation. Now, the story goes on. The article goes on, courtesy of CBSnews.com. Uh, let, me, let me go back. He is then handcuffed on the ground while police search his car. Now, why exactly are they searching this man's car? Without a warrant? I don't know. But they search his car. And Nazara asks, why am I being treated like this? Why? And the officer responds, because you're not cooperating. You're fixing to ride the, light, the lighting, son. You're fixing to ride the lighting? What, 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 what does that mean? Attorney Jonathan Arthur, who is representing Nazaro in a lawsuit filed earlier this month against the two officers, said that he was afraid if he took his hands out of view, something even worse would happen. And as I watched the video, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, wait, they're telling him to keep his hands where they can see him, but telling him to get out of the car, and he's saying he's wearing his seatbelt. How is he going to get out of the car? If he reaches down to unbuckle his seatbelt... Why wouldn't they shoot him and say he's reaching for a weapon? 
what prevents them from doing this? So, to unbuckle his seatbelt, to do anything, any misstep, he was afraid that they were going to kill him, Arthur told CBS News. The incident report said that Nazaro was initially pulled over for not having tags displayed on his SUV, but the temporary dealer plate is visible in the officer's body camera video. The lieutenant had recently bought the car. Nazaro was released without being charged. He was accused he has accused officers of using excessive force, illegally searching his car, and violating his constitutional rights, all of which was caught on camera. Lieutenant Nazaro's unit has been aware of the incident since it occurred in early December, and they've remained in close contact with him and made sure that any support needed from the Virginia National Guard, the Virginia National Guard uh, told CBS News in a statement on Monday. It also, it, all, it, it said Nazaro is an Army Health Services Administration officer serving in the Virginia National Guard's Norfolk-based 1st Battalion. In a statement Monday, Arthur called Officer Gutierrez's termination appropriate but called for more scrutiny. We must consider steps to decertify officers that engage in this behavior so that they cannot seek employment in another, in, with other law enforcement agencies. That right there. Because all that is going to happen is going, he's going to move to a neighboring city and be a cop again. That's all that's going to happen. And he said that, Arthur said that, while also criticizing Officer Cro Crocker for, for his failure to intervene. Now, if you watch the video, Officer Crocker is like, boy, what should I do? You know, this doesn't feel right. You see the question on his face about what he's doing and what is happening, how the whole thing is going down. But he's not innocent in all of this either. Additional law enforcement community has to consider seriously the failure of officers like Daniel Crocker to promptly intervene to end an unjust police civilian encounter as it unfolds. Too often, officers will support their colleagues, right or wrong, at the cost of innocent citizens. Virginia Governor Ralph Northam called the incident disturbing and said, Sunday that he is directing the state police to conduct an indep in independent investigation. I'm inviting Army Medic Lieutenant Coron Nazaro to meet soon. We must all continue to the larger dialogue about reform in our country. Now, if that is not a, polit uh, a political statement, I don't know what is. That's a, that's a real politician's re response. But ridiculous and even more ridiculous as it is caught on camera but this is something that happened again back in december we're just now hearing about it for whatever reason so let it be we're hearing about it now it's coming out this officer is just now being fired being being any action is just now being taken against this officer so, what was happening for the past four months? Since this incident happened, what was being done? And, and this is one of the questions that I have that, that, again, I'm so puzzled. But, and as, as I was talking to a friend of mine today, her son just joined the military. And she thought, you know, I'm 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 a little bit more comfortable now because my son is in the military and there's there, there's some respect between agencies law enforcement agencies so uh, at least with my son being in in the military having on the uniform but then this came up and clearly it doesn't matter if you're wearing uniform other than another police officer's uniform and I remember when I when I first started doing my broadcasts with the Lauder Hill Police Department, um, on one of the broadcasts, it was said, you know, even me as an officer, I get nervous if I see police lights behind me. 
Now, if a police officer is going to get nervous because of police lights, then that's concerning. What is it that is causing us to be so much on edge? And when I say us, I mean us generally. When it comes to the police, what is it? Why are we so on edge? Why can't we feel comfortable with the police around us? Yeah, Tracy, that, that, that thought did cross my mind that they were trying to, sque- to, to sweep it under the rug. But somehow it got out. I don't know how it got out, but it got out. Um, good evening, Tracy. Thank you for, for, for tuning in. So, when, when, when these things happen, it makes you wonder how many other situations like this had actually happened. You know, remember there was a time when social media was inundated with, with, with these police confrontations? And... I cannot recall seeing one incident where the civilian involved was not someone of color. I can't recall. And every time I think of when I see, I I would drive through some of these affluent communities and, and, and occasionally there might be a police pullover of some kids joyriding or something. These kids would be sitting on the side of the road. But they're not going through something like what Dante Wright went through. They're still alive. They're not traumatized like that. They're not traumatized like like Nazaro, like like second lieutenant Karen Nazaro is. This is ridiculous. But it goes back even further. You, you might recall when I spoke with advocates for Diamonds Ford, who is this young lady in Jacksonville, Florida, that a warrant was being executed, as just said, a warrant is being executed on her home, a search warrant. And they break the window. The officers break the window, the, 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 the sheriff's office. It was a joint task force, actually. Um, DEA, FBI, and Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. And they... What they did what is called a break and rake, where they break the window, pull the drapes apart away so that they could see what is happening inside. And as they're doing this, apparently they were supposed to be coming in the door at the same time. But the thing about this is in Florida, you have to announce. So there's there isn't a no knock situation unless there are certain circumstances that call for that. Right? They're considered exigent circumstances. So apparently it wasn't explained that there were that this was such a case. Now with all these officers that are, are there, the neighbors did, said they heard no announcement, and the ones that said they heard something, they couldn't figure out what was being said. The Diamonds and her fiancé were in the house, asleep. And they have a dog, and the dog never barked. Which means they didn't call, they didn't knock. When they broke the window, she thought, because of the neighborhood that she lives in, it was a break-in. She drew her weapon, she fired in the direction of the broken window. Officer gets shot. She runs to the bathroom, calls 911, and says, yo, send help. I don't know. And they fired back. And she said, you know, send help. They're trying to kill me. I don't know who it is. And 
the 911 operator is saying, okay, where are you? Do you know who's firing at you? And she's like, no, send help. And only to hear the voices. And you, you hear all this on a 911 call. And then it is announced that it is the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. All right, so y'all can go back a, a few weeks ago and check in the archives. You can check on YouTube. You can check the... the, the, the Okay, that's interesting. As I'm looking at this, something just refreshed, and I didn't refresh it. Well, you know, technology. Um, I don't know who it is that refreshed it, but thank you for refreshing that. Anyway, so y'all can check that out and listen to the advocates as they talk about it. This is an ongoing case right now. Diamonds Ford is her name. Diamonds with an S. So Diamond, add an S to it. Ford, F-O-R-D. Now, what had also happened, and I had learned of in, 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 in speaking with these advocates, is of a case of 18-year-old Devon Gregory. And Devon died during, as it is reported, an exchange of gunfire with police in Jacksonville. This was back in November of 2020. So it, 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 it's been a while. But civil rights um, activists have been calling out and asking for a special investigation into what happened the night he died. Reports are on November 17, four police officers with Jacksonville Sheriff's Office stopped a vehicle on San Juan Avenue near Cassatt Avenue in the Lakeshore area. Police said during the stop, the front seat passenger, later identified as Gregory, by friends and family members, became agitated and officers tried to de-escalate the situation without success. The medical examiner said Gregory shot himself. The medical examiner was, has not determined whether the self-inflicted shot or the shots by police were fatal. Gregory's family... Yeah, I, I know y'all have questions with that part, but hold on. Gregory's family and attorney were joined by Bishop Travis Grant, National Field Secretary for the Rainbow Push Coalition, along with other organizations from Jacksonville for a news conference at noon at City Hall in, in downtown Jacksonville. Devon Gregory's mother stood next to the family attorney, Kevin O'Connor, in tears as the attorney and Grant described what happened to Gregory that night. This child was snatched from the car by the teeth of a dog, Grant said. There was no attempt to even check for a pulse. Now, at this point, you all are really probably wondering, wait, dog? How did that come into play? All right. JSO Chief T.K. Walters said the exchange resulted in gunfire from all four officers. Walter, Walters said a handgun was located in the passenger, passenger seat where Gregory was sitting. The officers were placed on administrative leave according to protocol. Police say the circumstances that led up to the shooting are still being investigated. In November, the SPLC released a statement saying that part of Gregory's death reflects an ongoing pattern of, an Amer of American police departments, extrajudicial killings, unnecessary lethal force, and violence against young, pe young black people. Now, again, this is November of 2020. What happened to Second Lieutenant Nazaro happened in December of 2021. Now, news for Jax, news for Jax.com. In a, when was this? December 2020 article. Talks a little bit more about the incident and was it in this article i read somewhere okay 
um, the family hired a private medical examiner. According to the family's attorney, a second autopsy gr shows Gregory was shot 13 times, including four times in the head, and the attorney said Gregory was bitten by a canine. All right. When you hear information like that, now you wonder what was going on. So the medical, the first autopsy, the first medical examiner says, oh, so there was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Which gunshot wound was self-inflicted? He was shot 13 times. Who shot him four times in the head? When did he get shot four times in the head? Where did his first shot go? Or, so if he did shoot himself, why did he shoot himself? Um, so yeah, there was a weapon in the vehicle. Was that weapon actually discharged? That information wasn't in this report at all there's more information in this report but that one that bit of information isn't there nor did i find any other article which speaks to this so maybe i didn't look hard enough i could be i could have overlooked something i don't know but here you have an individual in a vehicle um Apparently, he didn't shoot at the officers. He shot himself. And then the officers decided to help him along the way. And they fired. So he was shot 13 times in total. And this was by, this is now being revealed by the independent autopsy. After he gets shot, they send in a canine. And the dog also bit him in the face so why after shooting was a canine sent in how much respect is placed on a life when actions like this are taken I I I could be crazy in thinking that you'd expect some kind of, 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 of respect. You'd expect something. They didn't even check for a pulse. The dog dragged him out of the vehicle. So the door also had to be open for the dog to drag him out of the vehicle. And officers didn't even check for a pulse. The thing is, the body cam videos for this incident are still yet to be released. Because I haven't seen any, like I said, this is a 2020 article. I haven't seen any, any new information. This is December 2020. I haven't seen any anything after that about the release of the body cam footage for this incident involving Devon Gregory. Crazy, right? I want to take a moment and, and, and recognize this segment sponsor. Um and, and, and give y'all a moment to catch your breath. Because I know some of this information can be a little bit overwhelming. So, thank you to Reggae Global Entertainment for sponsoring this segment. And Reggae Global will act as your booking agents, handle your tour management, take care of your copyrights, your legal contracts, business trademarks, business registration, your trademarks, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and more. Give them a call, 954-998-8034. That's 954-998-8034. Or reach out to them on reggaeglobalentertainment.com. 
<laughs> we go on. So, one incident that had body cam footage that was released was that of that relating to Brittany Christian Williams. Now, basically, how her story goes is on May 13, and this was 2020, May 2020. So it wasn't that long ago. The, uh, there was. Let me. I just want to skip off, skip out, skip out some of this, and get to the bit of information here. Okay, here we go. Um. On May 13, 2020, a Jacksonville officer parked his car in a driveway because he believed, according to an arrest report, the vehicle was abandoned. Williams, a 29-year-old graduate of the Paxson School for Advanced Studies and the University of Central Florida, walked out of her house and asked the officer if she could help him. He said he was going to check emails and then leave shortly, according to the arrest report. The report said she then asked him to leave her property. He again said he was going to finish up his work there first. The suspect immediately threw a spoon with an unknown green substance on it at me while I was sitting in my car, the report said. She then called 911 asking for another officer to help her because he wouldn't leave. When another officer arrived, the first officer explained that she had committed battery by throwing a spoon at him. The video shared on social media shows her pleading with officers to leave her property. I want him to leave, she told the officer. When I asked him, why are you here, police officer? Please leave. He started yelling at me. Do you think he has this kind of power, this kind of authority? She then repeats, why are you here? And why are you all smirking? Then the video shows the second officer seeming to grab her as she runs backward into the house screaming. Her boyfriend's voice is heard begging for the officer to stop as um, as the phone is dropped. No, 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 stop, please stop, 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 please stop, 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 please stop, bro, please, please, bro, please, please, man, please, that's my girl, please. This is what is printed in the article, according to Jacksonville.com. She was arrested on two charges of batteries, battery on a, law, on a law enforcement officer and one charge of resisting arrest without violence. The officer report said she had a gun, but it appeared she lawfully owned the gun. She was initially held on a $7,009 bond that she paid. She also posted videos showing a row of police cars across the street facing her home and she had seen police cars outside her home every day since getting out of jail. So police intimidation is a thing. Clearly. But uh, go Jacksonville. She also posted videos. Um, okay, a friend posted a GoFundMe to raise funds for, to pay for her dental surgery. Y'all pray for me. I hate this with all my heart. And as embarrassing as this is for me, I need the world to see what I'm going through because this is so unfair and so unjust. The officers say I battered them, yet I'm the only one with injuries. Her GoFundMe page said, The nerves in her teeth are exposed. Her own saliva causes her excruciating pain from the broken teeth. She has not been able to sleep and she has not, not eaten in days. The only thing she can do is drink water from a straw, and even that is a daunting task. She is beginning to feel weak, and she doesn't know how much longer she can go without eating something that can sustain her health. Listen, I remember falling off my bicycle, which caused me to break my front tooth. One tooth broke. And... The nerve was exposed. I remember how how 
painful that was. Because even air made it uncomfortable. Talking wasn't comfortable. Drinking anything hot or cold. Drinking something room temperature. Nothing. I had to drink with a straw. Just like they're talking about that what happened with her. The difference is I fell off my fell off a bicycle, hit my face on the pavement, and broke a tooth. This woman, it's different. And <laughs> when this one has, has the body cam footage that, that has been released. And she also called 911. And in talking with 911, I'll read what the transcript says. Um, so she called 911. There's an officer parked in my yard, in my front yard, in my driveway, yelling at me for no reason and refusing to move. And I need him to move now. This is my house. I don't know who he is. Williams told 911 dispatchers she was scared for her life. I do not trust him. I don't trust white officers, especially males. And I'm here and I'm a female and young by myself. This is my home and he's telling me not. He's telling me he's not about to leave. How dare he? And if I pull my gun on him and he shoot me and kill me, then what am I to do? Ma'am. Don't do that, the operator responded. Later in the call, the 911 operator tells Williams to put the gun away while officers arrive just to keep the situation diffused. Just put the gun up for me, okay? The dispatcher asked. I will, replied Re Williams. And you, 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 if you listen to it, to the video um, with the 911 call, you hear that. You, you hear all that. On body cam footage, as the first officer waits in his squad car for the other officers to arrive, dispatch can be heard relaying that message. The complainant saying she will pull a gun on the officer is if the officer is approaching her. But told receiving, she's but told receiving she's going to put it away. Now, the nine one one operator is messy also because she did not say she was going to pull her gun on the police officer. She didn't say that. She said, if I were to do that and I get shot and killed, then what? She didn't say, I am going to pull my gun on, these, on, on any of these officers if they come into my house. So moments later, when a second officer arrives and approaches Williams on her front step, Williams can be heard screaming. The first officer's body cam footage shows Williams on her phone and on the front porch when the second officer approaches she backs away and starts to run inside when he grabs and tackles her the officer would later claim she kicked him the second officer's body cam footage shows her being taken handcuffed to a squad car and she says you just mad because I'm a black girl she tells the officer and he responds no you battered a law enforcement officer you kicked me and she, she, she actually shouted, I kicked you, I battered you, I kicked you. And a third officer's body camera footage shows, doesn't show the incident because his camera immediately dislodged in the struggle. Several other officers arrive and remain on the scene for some time, speaking to family members and attempting to explain what happened regarding her broken teeth. And an officer, an officer tells William's aunt she did that herself. And the aunt asks, how? Either when she went to the ground or when she slapped her face, when she slapped her face on the door. And the aunt says, so how is she going to slap her face on the door? William's attorney, Jeff Chukwama, notes Williams has no prior criminal record. And says the officers used excessive force on the 95 pound woman. Yeah. Just a little twig of a woman. How can someone in this position who is a criminal by no means have police officers treat her this way? 
Now, the next pre-trial for um, Williams was February 1st of this year. And she 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 is facing let me see what it is that she's facing here. I I I had found it here. Um da, 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 ah, here it is. She could face up to ten years in prison if convicted of as these officers claim, battery on a police officer. And resisting arrest, non-violent resisting violence in resisting arrest. This is this is this is crazy. But again, this is Jacksonville, and you know, I I would we would hear these reports of of things happening with police officers all over the United States, and me being in in Florida would think you know, boy. I'm glad I'm in South Florida. These things don't happen in Florida. But although Jacksonville is North Florida, it's Florida nonetheless. This is what our children are facing. This is what causes me concern. Because I have children. I have two boys. How do I tell them to 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 operate when dealing with law enforcement? And it's not like I don't know law enforcement officers. I know officers in law enforcement. From patrolmen to to, to commissioners. I know people in law enforcement. I've spoken with them. Now, the ones that I have spoken with are different from the ones that are in these reports, clearly. So, with that being said, we know that you have good officers out there. We know that there are law-abiding, um, community-loving officers that are out there. But here is what happens. You have some bad apples in the barrel. And they make it bad for everyone. Because one incident like this leads to all officers being labeled. The problem is you don't only have one incident like this. You have the Botham genes. You have the Brianna Taylors. You have, um, what's her name? Oh shoot, she died in 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 police custody. Said she hung herself. But that wasn't the case. There are so many cases where the good officers don't get highlighted because for some reason the, the the good is always overlooked and then you have what we get in news reports of officers killing 20 year old men by accident oh i thought it was my taser oops Sorry. Or, geez, I thought this was my apartment. Oops. Sorry. Or, you broke the law. You don't have a tag displayed on your vehicle, but the tag is displayed and can be shown on the video as displayed. But I'm going to spray you with pepper spray anyway. And I'm going to illegally search your vehicle. 
in doing this, I'm going to totally disregard that you're an officer in the United States Army. I am going to pull up my squad car in your driveway and there's nothing you can do about it. I leave when I'm very well ready. As a matter of fact, I'm arresting you for being loud and disturbing me. And I'm going to break a couple of your teeth in the process. One thing though, what Brianna did, what, 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 not certain, not Brianna, um, Brittany, what she did was she created a platform. She created LMLM to empower women who survived male brutality by producing documentaries about their story. And I'm going to try to connect with her also. So, she is now an award-winning pro police brutality filmmaker. She herself, of course, being brutalized by male police officers. She created a network to help protect and empower women. The network is called LMLM, and this stands for Love Me or Leave Me. And... The production company responsible for Britney's renowned film, Illville, is Art Trade. Now, LMLM was created by Britney after JSO male police officers trespassed on her property for no reason, entered her home without a warrant, and brutalized her. Britney... Stands 5 feet 2 inches tall. Weighs 98 pounds. So she put on weight since the incident. You know, the dentist did some work with her teeth. She got to eat again. She put on some weight. Cool. The police left her with broken teeth and nerve damage causing a neurological disorder dubbed the suicide disease. CRPS. This traumatic event is what inspired Britney to create LMLM, Love Me or Leave Me. Now, prior to this, I will admit, I had not heard of the suicide disease. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to, I'm going to, you know me, I, I, I don't, I've never heard of something. I'm going to go looking and, and see what I can find about this. Here it is, this woman went through this traumatic experience. But still faces the possibility of 10 years if convicted. Convicted of what? So they say she threw a spoon at the police officer. Seriously? A spoon with an unknown green substance. Well, was she having dinner? Was she feeding a child? But what could be on this spoon that was so dangerous? And then, if you look at the videos, you'll see one officer with a bag, a Ziploc bag, with a plastic spoon in it. I guess this is the evidence. Seriously? It, 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 it makes you ask certain questions. And none of the questions are ones that you want answers to. Because when you look at, 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 at what has been happening the last few years, well, let me, let me rephrase that. When you look at what has been published by media houses the last few years and social media, as it relates to 
law enforcement interactions with citizens. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. It's not welcoming. It's nothing shy of just heartbreaking and sickening. But in the midst of all that, there are still some good police officers. There are still good police departments. Whole departments. And I can only call the name of the ones that I know. And so the one that I know is the Lauder Hill Police Department. They don't pay me to call their name. They don't pay me to speak good of them. Nothing like that. But I've been in the Lauder Hill community. I don't live in the Lauder Hill community, but I've been in the Lauder Hill community. And I've seen the difference. I have heard reviews from residents of the Lauder Hill community. I've heard reviews of the police officers in the Lauder Hill community. Now, for them to come out and say they are doing something great and the community not say that they're talking a bunch of bull, you know, that speaks volumes. To witness, like I said before, a whole section of the community coming out in support of a, a, a police officer retiring and then that, that, that police officer not only retires but continues to do work in that community voluntarily come on that says something so there are some good police departments there are some good police officers and and, and big ups the chief constant stanley for the work that she is doing in the Lauder Hill community. Big ups to her. And and the other officers in the Lauder Hill Police Department. But when you have officers like Gutierrez in, in, in Virginia who was just fired from that job. That and that's all. He was just fired. Yeah, he he anything to do with law enforcement. Even as a security guard, he needs to be barred from that. Go do something else. You know, in, in fact, he should be given community service hours. Probably for the rest of his life. In the inner city communities. Because there's something com clearly wrong with him. And then the other officer, um, what's his name? Um, I forgot now. I can go back to it. But um, Crocker? Yeah, Crocker is his name. Needing more training. That's it? No, he needs to get fired too. Learn to do the right thing. What kind of officer are you? And any other officer that operates in that way, where they're going to support an officer that they see doing something wrong. Because that brings down the whole reputation, that brings out the whole that breaks the whole trust con con connection between citizens and the police department. Just that. But, you know, who am I? I say my little bit and I move on. And I, 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 I try to keep me safe. I was on the road two weeks ago. Police officer pulls me over and says, you know, I pulled you over because your tints are too dark. I said, excuse me? He said, yeah, the, the ones in the back can be this dark, but the ones in the front, they, they are too dark. Just, I, I just need to check this real quick. I'm like, okay, what do you need to do to check them? And he says, put your windows down. Now, incidentally, like 
a week after I the tint was done because I remember the the tint was a, a birthday gift. I'm driving my windows up, and there I went to a park to play a ball in that park there is usually a police car that that is stationed in that park because on that street there tends to be speed people tend to speed so they set up a little speed trap i spoke to police to police officers at my car we are talking never once had a police officer said you know your tints are too dark as a matter of fact, the very day this police officer pulled pulled me over in this community that I I'd never go to, first time going into this community. Um, but police officer pulled that day. There was a police vehicle beside me at a traffic light, and the officer looked at me. I looked at the officer. I acknowledged her. She acknowledged me. Window. Both our windows were up, so clearly she could see me if we acknowledge each other so this officer pulls me over and says you know i, I just want to check I'm, I'm not gonna write you a ticket or anything but um i just wanted what so here's what happens right after that on my way out i drive past a vehicle in the opposite direction that looks darker than mine no nope, nope. all the windows up you cannot see inside this vehicle. But I get pulled over for tints. So the profiling thing happens. <laughs> let's 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 call it what it is. The profiling thing happens. But at the same time, you need to recognize that it happens and keep your cool if you want to run a video when you get pulled over if you get pulled over run the video if you're on the if you want to call somebody so that you have a witness call somebody so that you have a witness whatever you need to do to to, to protect yourself you do so outside of resisting do not resist comply as much as possible be polite even if the officer isn't, you be polite. Do the right thing. Keep your name clean. Because, let's face it, some of our people that have been given power don't deserve the power given. And for some, that's exactly what it is, a power trip. But not all police officers are like that. So don't go painting with a broad brush. Be mindful of that. Some people actually join the police force because they care about people. They care about communities. Those may be few and far between. Or maybe it's just the bad apples that are few and far between. But because what they have done or what they are doing so horrible that these things make national news and sometimes international news headlines this incident about Dante right it's on BBC news international news headlines so as we as we move forward as we go about our daily lives we citizens we have the power to effect change let's join together and effect some change I'm gonna bounce on out of here. But 
But before I do so, of course, we have to ask the question what kind of world are we living in? The sound of Anthem Reggae Band. That's the title of the track. say thank you to GMAP Music Solutions for sponsoring this segment of the broadcast. GMAP Music Solutions provides sound, light and stage production services, musical equipment, PA systems, audio engineers, DJs, bands, musicians, singers and more. Get them a call 754-307-GMAC. That's 754-307-4622. Check them out online gmapmusicsolutions.com can also do your online shopping there. This is a segment we call the musical therapy. Yeah, I kind of had to let this one play out, you know? Because yeah, I have to ask the question, what kind of world are we living in? This is JQ. It's called Get a Morals.
A brighter picture for the future. And not because I may come from the ghetto. Don't you underestimate my ghetto morals. The sound of JQ. This is Nikki Blaze. Track called Lost Illusion. Mm, yeah. Protests in Minnesota. Lost in illusion, yeah. As they talk about the death of Dante Wright, Quinn redeemed. They said, "This is this just adds gasoline to the fire. We're tired and we're fired up. The world needs to see what is going on and know." The world is watching Minnesota. Empress Unique. Working out with culture, Kali says, hey, listen. This world, it needs changes. You know 
son of Empress Unique we're ch- working out with Coach Akali. Track called The World Need Changes. Nine minutes before I get out of here. This is Trisha. Sometimes I'm weary, lots of things I know I needed, but reminding us that we need to keep rising. I cannot focus, I'm losing concentration. Sometimes I feel like I'm all alone. Put my feet on solid ground, me still a way the ground. Life no bother feel me now. Because the time frame you're narrow, some people hollow. Be careful of the ones where you they follow. So I try to walk this path of life the way I can. Pull myself towards my own. Just fail Cause the greatest gift of all Is my ability to rise again I'll keep on rising and rising Never gonna let me down When I wake up in the morning My heart's still a beat I have to put a smile on my face And I have to give thanks to the creator For another day to shine my light So I open up my mind I put myself in line towards my goal, I shall not lose my sight. So I, so I, pull towards my destiny, So I, so I, am I gonna get me down? So Cause the greatest gift of all Is my ability to rise again I'll keep on rising and rising Never gonna let me down Because we're not gonna keep our heads down. Like the Phoenix. We will rise up out of this. Whenever I'm sad, I remember a smile. It takes me around. And it comes in its cold. G Cole says, We'll be like birds. This track is called Like a Bird. Strong again, like I'm starting a friend. I want to thank you each and everyone for tuning in. Thank you for your support. As I get out of here, I want to encourage you and remind you to look out for members of your community. And your community is not just the development that you live in, but it spreads far and wide. The people that you pass along the way, whether you walk, ride, or drive, take the bus, the plane, the boat, or the train, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know who's going to do something good for you tomorrow. Just like a bird. Good evening, I can see that you're walking alone. Do join me tomorrow for a healthy love right here. Same time, same place. 10 p.m. Eastern. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you wherever you are in the world. From right here in South Florida, I bid you a good night. Make you feel strong again Like you're starting to finish Everything's brand new I do want to say thank you to the affiliates though Before I go On Harmony Radio NIE Radio Island Worldwide The Foundation Radio Network ClintonLindsay.com WGLRO Ollywop Radio Dusik Media Group Thank you all. Just like a bird.
Do remember the podcast is available. Just, like a Just search the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew everywhere. Innovative streaming and recording has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30 second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us 754-999-6020. Add Sheer TV, part of Pulsing Media Group. It takes an entire village to raise a child. Hello, I'm Paul Campbell, here to talk about Palace. Peace and Love Academic Scholarship. This nonprofit group supports students facing serious obstacles from entering or continuing their studies, not because the grades are failing, but due to the lack of financial support. Over the past eight years, Hallis has awarded 600 scholarships valued at approximately 50.3 million Jamaican dollars or 415,000 U.S. dollars. Together, we must build a better future for our children. Please visit www.palace1.org and make your donation to brighten the future of a deserving child. Palace, preserving young minds for posterity. Yes, my people, check out I Red Funks on Reggae Global Radio every Saturday at 8 p.m. with Kev Stew. We all give you a pre life. Brand new! Good for you! Kick it like a ball if you don't see a dance hall. You hear that? Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment.